let me just start by assuring both you, the viewer, and our YouTube overlords that I don't think this virus is a hoax, and I do think that people should adhere to basic PPE when they're in stores or crowded outdoor areas. It's a pretty simple precaution to take for now, and I think we should do it. However, CNN and other agenda-driven media outlets are ramping up the fear and bringing on these so-called experts that aren't even getting basic facts right. So I think it's perfectly legitimate to criticize their claims. To that point, CNN's Don Lemon brought on Jim Acosta wannabe Jeremy Diamond and Dr. Jonathan Rainier to spread a little fear and misinformation about Trump's plan to reopen the country. The president seems to be saying that it's safe to go to the parks and the beaches. Does that argument make any sense to you? No, and I think in, in some ways it really betrays the uh, really hundreds of thousands of people in the United States who work in hospitals and all the nurses in the ICU and the staff everywhere were wearing masks and we're wearing them to protect each other. And when I walked out onto the street, the streets of DC were really filled with people yesterday. I really felt betrayed. I don't know. It seemed like he was playing it up a bit there and putting on a performance. I mean, really, you feel betrayed because people were outside after months of isolation? We were told to flatten the curve. Meanwhile, I keep seeing this news about furloughed medical workers and hospitals that are shutting down. Look, I'm obviously not a doctor or a scientist, but I understand that people have to work to survive and businesses need customers or else they cease to exist. And we're not even talking about that right now we're just talking about people being outside going out to take a walk is a dangerous betrayal of medical workers if i wear ppe or stand six feet apart everything should be okay right sorry for interrupting we'll get right back into the video but first just give me a quick minute to tell you about this free special offer for my subscribers it's tough right now to get your hands on gold dealers just can't get enough but we know it's time to protect your wealth time to protect your family. Did you know that you can buy, sell, and spend physical gold with Swipe with Gold? It's super easy with our mobile app to buy real gold for better financial security. Just visit www.swipewithgold.com and download the app. Register and your prepaid debit MasterCard will be delivered by mail in just a few days for free. When you get your card, you just load on your cash. Then you're ready to buy, sell, and spend in real gold. It's that simple. You can withdraw your money anytime at any ATM that accepts MasterCard. So visit www.swipewithgold.com. That's www.swipewithgold.com and download the app right now to get your free card and start using real gold as money. Even if people do get it, how many of them are actually going to need hospitalization? If they're under 60, not many. Do we even have a definite number on that considering how many people are untested or are asymptomatic? Just so we're clear here, I'm not saying that I don't care about the lives of people over 60. I'm simply saying those are the people that should remain locked down. Honestly, after all the fear mongering about overcrowded hospitals and ventilator shortages that never happened, I think we deserve a little bit more than this fear mongering hyperbole going into month three of isolation. We get it. You hate Trump and you'll do anything anything to get him out of office. Unfortunately, these people in the media have lied so often and been so brazen about their bias that we have to be skeptical of anything they say. The president continues to try to deflect and distract from the coronavirus story and pointing fingers uh, at others. Uh, he certainly is done, and this is something that we've seen, of course, the president do repeatedly. He has refused to accept any responsibility uh, for any of the number of failings of the administration's response to the coronavirus crisis from uh, January and into February. And this is exactly what I mean about not being able to trust anything they say. We already know that he stopped travel from Chinese foreign nationals in January, but there were many other actions taken that the media predictably ignored. It's a 24-point list, which I'll link in the description but just to name a few things february 2nd cdc expanded enhanced entry screening to eight major airports february 4th fda issued an emergency use authorization for the cdc diagnostic february 5th trump admin officials briefed lawmakers on the federal government's coronavirus response efforts and it goes on and on and on all through february something i've been asking people on twitter who then inevitably block me is why obama was never blamed for h1n1 or flu deaths during during his administration, but then suddenly a Republican gets in office and they're blaming them for virus deaths. I never get a response.
response other than but Obama, but these people don't seem to know or care that they're utter hypocrites. It's not about what Obama did or didn't do, it's about equal standards being applied. The fact is, Democrats and the media want to blame Trump for COVID deaths for obvious reasons. They think it'll drive down his support and give them a better chance going into the 2020 election. They're willing to lie and apparently destroy the country's economy to do it. Just to reiterate, in case there's any confusion, I don't think this virus is a hoax. I think the Democrats and the media are taking full advantage of this crisis to push through their agenda. Like they always say, the best lies have an element of truth to them. I find it more than a little odd that all of these people wanted a recession in order to beat Trump and then an opportunity presents itself. President Trump is attempting to downplay growing concerns that the U.S. economy could be headed for a recession. Even in the face of some economic warning signs, the president and his top aides are now brushing off fears of a recession down the road. Recession and re-election. President Trump insisting he has no concerns about the economy after that 800-point plunge as his 2020 opponents fire back saying the president is terrible for business. Questions about the economy that haven't been asked in more than a decade, warning signs that haven't been flashing this bright in more than a decade, and clouds that some analysts say haven't been this dark in a decade. Serana, you look at this and you say it's here. It's here. And in fact, I said that in, uh, on Sunday in a column, uh, and I'm not sure whether to be happy that I was right or really devastated that my retirement savings has gone to. Because obviously we are now heading into the election season. The president has been underwater for his entire presidency in terms of job approval. The one area where he's been above is the economy. If, that, if the economy goes south, he is in a world of hurt. Are you playing Allison? You want to play Allison? No, you play Allison. All right, Allison asks, <laughs> is there anything that he could do that would lose you? And Daryl, his most ardent supporter, says, start losing money. It's one of the things that I've often thought is when will Republicans in Congress stand up to the president on some of the offensive things he says when the economy turns that out? Yeah. Maybe the one that thing that gets their attention. Yeah. So, uh, I've been saying for about two years that I hope we have a recession. <laughs> and so, yes, a recession would be very worth getting rid of Donald Trump and these kind of policies. You know, and, and it would get rid of him. Next thing you know, they're all screeching about not letting a good crisis go to waste. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. It's one of the best ways you can support this channel. If you'd like to further support this channel, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back. Like a rock, you take it down, it's like a rock.